Welcome, everyone, to AEW Unrestricted, the official podcast of All Elite Wrestling. This is referee Aubrey Edwards with my wonderful, beautiful co-host, Tony Schiavone. How are you doing, Tony? I'm great. Don't know if I'm beautiful, but I'm great. <laughs> You're beautiful it, in my mind. In my same heart. To you, same to you, Aubrey. Aww. Um, gosh, we've been doing this for a number of years. We're into 2022 now, so yes, another year. Jeez. For you and I doing this podcast, I, I do want to say this before we get to our great guest. It was recently, uh, last month, in Chicago at C2E2. And um, I, I, this is no lie. I had hundreds of people come up to me and tell me how much they enjoy you and I together on this podcast. Oh, I know. Every time we have a show at Dynamite, someone's like, oh, my God, I love you and Tony. Your comes yeah. so great. I'm like, oh, thanks for listening. <laughs> like, I just sat on a phone call with my buddy. Yeah, we interview it, people, and it's great. That's right. It's it's great, and we do have a very special interview here today. We do. We have the wonderful, legit Layla Hirsch. Welcome to the show, ma'am. Excited to have you. I'm excited to do this. Uh, yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm excited to have you. You've got a wonderful backstory uh, that I think needs needs to be told a little bit more because I think people will appreciate you uh, more than they already do once they hear. So I know you debuted in. Uh, Jacksonville, AEW Dark against Hikaru Shida back in October of 2020, which seems like uh, a century ago at this point. So yeah. how how did you end up on AEW Dark? So I had a few people that believed in me. Uh -huh. Doesn't it feel it, good? Yes. It, yeah, it does feel really good. <laughs> uh, I feel like I had more people believe in me in wrestling than outside of wrestling. So it's nice. Uh, but I had one this I had this one person in particular who kept reaching out to me, you know, uh, hey, saying this might happen for you. And I was like, okay, if it happens, okay, if not, that's cool. And then, you know, the one night I get a text message saying, hey, I think you're going to get booked. And I was like, okay. And then a couple hours later, I get an email from uh, Christopher Daniels saying, like, that was official, got the whole email, you know, so... Uh, nerves out of my mind, you know, knowing this is going to be the biggest opportunity of my life. Uh, yep. So that's how that happened. Um, then I show up, you know, uh, which is always nerve wracking, you know, meeting new people. This is such a big stage, you know, uh, but thankfully in AW, everybody was just so nice, you know, so super nice. Aubrey, you were awesome. Tony, you know, you guys uh so welcoming, which was uh, a great feeling, you know. Uh, and then, you know, I uh, found out that I was wrestling Hikaru Shida. Like, I felt no pressure. so... Huh? <laughs> no pressure. No pressure, right? One of the best, you know. Um, so that was nerve-wracking for me, but, you know, uh, this is an opportunity that I had to take, you know. So it was a sink or swim, and, uh, you know, I think I did pretty good against her. You know, <laughs> no, it, you, you did. You did do very well. As a matter of fact, then you get booked on Dynamite. So there's a big change as far as the number of viewers, as you know, uh, Layla, between Dynamite and Dark. So you've been on Dark. Now you're going to Dynamite. You face uh, Serena Deeb. And so it's got to be even more nerve wracking. How did you prepare for that match uh, knowing that you're going to be seen now in front of millions of people? I barely got to prepare for that match, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Technically, I was just, we were just thrown out there, you know, uh, due to an injury, unfortunately. But, so, as terrifying that was, because that was my first TV experience, you know. But the cool part was it was Serena Deep, who I knew would, it would be fine, you know what I mean? I trusted my earring ability, and of course, I trusted her. So, you know, thankfully, when we went out there, and I had another killer performance, you know. Uh, so it was a surreal moment for me, too. It, everything happened so quickly, you know, from facing Hikaru Shida and then the next night on Dynamite, Serena Deep. I, you know, I can't believe that still. <laughs> it, both of those, I mean, I I tell tell them, I tell other people at work, like both of them are some of the greatest wrestlers that we have on our roster, not even just women's wrestlers, but both of them have the ability to elevate the talent they're in the ring with. So that's a that's a great way to start. Like, hey, just work with these uh, both awesome legendary people we happen to have. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. welcome to AEW. Here you go. Here you go. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Uh, so that's October. Yeah. Uh, 
Come around March, uh, there's the announcement that you've signed with AEW. Uh, tell us about that day. Like, how uh, did you find out on Twitter when everyone else found out, or how how does that happen? <laughs> yeah, I found out on Twitter. You know, <laughs> I yeah, you know, I uh, I've been. It's funny because like once I got there, my next, you know, they might be silly, but my next goal was to have that graphic posted because to me that meant the world. You know what I mean? It, it, it's like, okay, this is legit, actually. Like, this is really happening. So, you know, when Tony Khan announced me that I was officially signed, I was, like, shaking, you know? I was like, wow, like, you know, I actually did this, you know, in a short amount of time as well, you know? So, um, I just, it was awesome, you know? It was, like, it was so nice to see someone like me could make it to this stage, could have this graphic, you know, it meant the world to me. You know, it was like, all right, you know, everything I've done up to up until this point has been worth it. You know, um, yeah, I actually still get chills for it. So that's mm-hmm. I had to. Awesome. How did uh, how was the reaction with your family on that? That had to be pretty cool. They were so proud of me, um, especially my mom, because she's supported me since day one. Right. Uh, you know, no matter the amount of times I dropped out of school, you know, came up events. I, uh, you know, I, I put, I put her through a lot with wrestling, you know, but she stuck by my side since day one and she was very proud, you know, um, proud mom right there. You know, it was nice to prove her right. You know, you know, all the times I've told her, Hey mom, it's going to pay off. You know, I'm going to make it, Just give me some time. And uh, and then showed her that graphic, and it was like, here it is, you know, I did it. That's wonderful. Yeah. Uh, speaking of your family, uh, you were born in Moscow, Russia, which I was shocked to find because your accent is so uh, New Jersey that <laughs> I was just like, no, that can't be. That's that's fake. No way. Uh, so born in Moscow, Russia, and you lived in an orphanage until you were adopted at eight years old. And yeah. what? Like, what do you remember from your time in Russia? Oh, man, a lot. Uh, you know, like I said, thankfully, I had my twin sister, Valeria, with me. You know, uh, but Russia, like, I was in an orphanage. So it's just so different from here. You know, um, they had, like, a whole system for us. Like, we had, like, a whole routine, you know, when we would eat, go out, go to bed. Um, they were very strict. It was very strict. Uh, you know, you had some people that were nice, some people that weren't the nicest, you know. Uh, you know, the one thing that I loved about Russia was food. I love Russian food. I, you know, I love it. Uh, but it was a, it was tough. Um, you know, like if you got in trouble, you'd have to kind of pay for it. You know, I I wasn't the best kid. I got in trouble a little bit, you know, because I, I, I love to fight. I love mm. to, you know. <laughs> and you know sometimes that uh, cost me but um it was like i'd say it was a great experience but it was also like you know not such a great experience you know but i feel like i've learned so much and um uh, being adopted has changed my whole life you know because i if i wasn't adopted i don't know where i would be right now you know um but you know even like when i with school, Oof. school was rough. And I remember when I came here, I had like no patience. I, you know, had a hard time learning, you know, uh, came came to the US with no English or anything. And I remember like, felt so bad for my mom when it came to homework and I would ask her to help me and I wouldn't get it. I would snap, I would rip my homework apart, you know, um, so sorry, mom, you know, but, I don't know. And I think one thing I miss about Russia is the people I've met. So, and the cool story with that is um, when me and my sister got adopted, a month later, one of our best friends from Russia also got adopted. Oh, awesome. Yeah. And she, she now lives in like South Jersey. So it was really cool. Yeah. It was like wild. It was really cool. Like maybe it was like a year later. I don't remember, but she like called us saying, Hey, do you remember us? And I was like, what? Of course. So it was just, you know, it was sad 
leaving Russia because that was my home for eight years. But at the same time, it was like, we're about to get a whole new different world, you know, you know, a whole different life. Um, and again, lucky that me and my sister both got adopted because that's not always the case, you know. So thank God. <laughs> Yeah. Now, did, you, did your parents adopt both you, or did she go to another family, your sister? No, we're both together. Oh, good. Thank cool. you. That's wonderful. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, Sorry. We've, got a, uh, we've got a question from uh, Carissa Lopez. We're going to have fan questions later, Layla. But okay. This, this one is kind of important to what we're talking about right now. Uh, Carissa wants to know, how difficult was for you to learn English, and what obstacles did you have to overcome in learning a new language? Yeah, it, it sucked. <laughs> it sucked. Um, so thankfully, when I was in second grade, I had another kid who spoke fluent Russian. So lucky me. So and I was in the same class as him. And he helped me a lot. But, you know, obviously, I needed way more than that. So I had to do speech. Uh, I think called ES, ESL. I think it was ESL. Yeah, English as a second language. Yeah, which... I hated, I hated it so much. It was just, it was overwhelming, you know? Uh, Cause to me, it was always like, I had to be the one catching up with everything, you know? So it was, it was tough. Um, I feel like I'm still learning English, honestly, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So I think but, it's, I, it, it's always interesting. I think like I see this a lot with say like Sheeta as well, who's been learning English since she moved to the, the country, but there's, there's so much to the language you learn. And then there's so much to like the idioms and the slang and the different, like sarcasm itself is a very interesting thing because if you don't understand intention behind words, it's just like, oh, you can end up in a really weird situation where you're like, why is this person being mean? It's like, oh no, they're just trying to be funny and you're just totally lost. So. Yeah. Uh, I, I can't imagine, uh, being immediately immersed in a different language and just trying to like, uh, not only keep up in school, but also like try and understand what the fuck people are saying. Like, damn, that's, that's crazy. Uh, so coming to America, what surprised you most about America? And w when you first came over here as a kid, what surprised me? So first airplane, I've never been on an airplane. Sure. So the first time on an airplane, it was a 10 hour flight. So, you know, uh, I don't think that's, I just, I think what I remember on the airplane, I was just run back and forth on the aisle. I just thought that was so much fun. So I'd get up, run back and forth, you know? <laughs> um, so I remember when we got here, it, I swear to God, like the, the only word we knew was presence. <laughs> but, yeah. So our parents spoiled us. So as soon as we got to the house, like, First of all, oh, so car, being in a car, that was a rough experience for me. Uh, so the first time I got picked up from uh, the airport, we I think it was maybe an hour and a half drive home, you know, and I just remember I was throwing up the whole time. I, I don't know, because wow. I, I was not used to being in a car, mm -hmm. but it was just, it was like bag after bag. You know, I know that's disgusting, but that was just my experience. Yeah came here you know i just was not used to that you know i'm right. oh, sorry um so then so yeah presents were awesome you know we get that in russia you know sure uh, i think also celebrating our birthdays we didn't celebrate our birthdays at all you know so when we so when our parents like threw us surprise parties or like you know birthday parties i was like oh this is really cool you know to mm. have that over and celebrate us you know that was really awesome um and then sports you know when i was in russia we didn't do sports you know right. so as soon as i like discovered sports i discovered soccer you know basketball it was like wow okay this is what i'm good at you know um and then one other interesting fact i think you you find interesting is uh in russia when we had our uh, drinks they would serve them warm. Yeah. So I think one of the biggest issues I had in Russia was when they gave us milk, it wasn't that great. I remember all that from it, right? So I don't remember this, but my mom told me when we came to, to the U.S., for a, long, for a little while, when we would go to stores, 
you know how they have like drinks on display? Yeah. Yeah. So, so she told me, she was like, you know, you would go to Starbucks and you would ask for a drink, but you would have, you would ask for the drink that was on display because we didn't drink uh, cold drinks. So I just thought, wow, okay. I was like, I don't know how I did that, but okay. Cause I love cold drinks now. <laughs> so wow. a lot of adjusting coming here, you know, a lot of adjusting. Yeah. I, there, there's no question. It, there's no question it was. And, uh, you said you discovered a lot of things, and we are talking with Layla Hirsch. When she came to the country, uh, she discovered pro wrestling. We'll hear that story when we continue on AEW Unrestricted. So you guys know we travel every single week for AEW Dynamite and Rampage, and that means we're constantly using unsecure airport Wi-Fi, hotel Wi-Fi, arena Wi-Fi, and security is super, super important. I'm not worried about hackers stealing my data because I use NordVPN on my phone, my laptop, every single device, and it gives me huge peace of mind. Yeah, l l let me tell you this, and most of you know this, but this is very important because it's true. They're everywhere. They're hacker. If you go on to a public internet, it's really cool. You go into the airport, go into Starbucks, go into a restaurant, and they say, hey, free Wi-Fi. There's somebody around looking to hack into your information. But with NordVPN, that's not going to happen. Right, Aubrey? That's right. My internet traffic is routed through secure encrypted channels, which Yay. protects my data, my privacy. I can use NordVPN up on six devices. I can use it up to six devices. So everything is protected, not just, not just my laptop, but my phone, everything else. Absolutely. So, uh, Aubrey, and I know you are in charge of gaming with AEW, and I know that's a very, very big deal, having a VPN to protect everything. I stream and download movies all the time when I travel, so that's a big deal for me. So we want to invite you to go to NordVPN.com slash AEW or use code AEW to get a huge discount off your NordVPN plan plus an additional month for free. It's equivalent to buying a cup of coffee every month. That's right. That's all it is. A small price to pay for premium cybersecurity access to vast amounts of entertaining content. 30-day money-back guarantee of NordVPN is not for you, so there's absolutely no risk. Sign up today at nordvpn.com slash aw. Use code aw to get a huge discount of NordVPN plus an additional month for free. Give us that website again, Aubrey. That is nordvpn.com slash AEW. Totally risk-free. Check it out. You won't regret it. We are talking with legit Layla Hirsch. And you are listening to AEW Unrestricted. Tony and Aubrey with you once again this week. Thanks for being with us. And we'll tell you how you can join us a little bit later on. Uh, Layla, 14 years old. When you discovered pro wrestling, watching WWE SmackDown, do you remember the first time you saw wrestling on TV and what was going through your mind at that time? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I had no idea what it was. And I had a really good friend who loved this stuff, you know, loved wrestling. And uh, basically how it all happened was we were at my house and we were just watching TV and flipping through channels. And uh, he puts on Friday Night SmackDown. And he just, he literally looks at me and he goes, Hey, you know what this is? And I'm like, Nope. And as he's talking to me and, and explaining it to me, I am just so drawn in. So the match that I remember was R Truth versus Mike Knox. That was the match that I remember. And I just remember, you know, um, literally R Truth doing R Truth stuff, uh, you know, the display, the dancing, you know, it was just awesome. And uh, I just also remember the ring, uh, the audience, the whole setup. And I, I kid you not, it was at that moment, was, that moment was like, okay, this is what I want to do. I had no idea what it was. And I remember going downstairs to my mom and I said, hey, mom, what does it take to be a professional wrestler? And she said, start wrestling. That's literally how it all happened. I, like just that one night, my friend showing me wrestling and I was just somehow I was just I got hooked to it. And it was in my in my, in my heart. I was just like, wow, this is what I want to do. I don't know how I'm going to do it, how I'm going to get there, but I'm going to do it. 
That's uh, the, yeah, that is crazy. Now Aubrey's got the next question, but I want to do a follow up quickly. So you're saying that in the same night when you first saw wrestling, you went to your mom that same night and said, "I want to be a pro wrestler." Right? Same day. Hundred uh, percent. Yeah. Wow. That's 100%. that's absolutely incredible to be just like touched by something that quickly and that deeply. That's so awesome. Uh, what were some of your favorite wrestlers? So growing up, I would say my favorite. What, so Jeff Hardy, instantly drawn to him. You know, um, Rey Mysterio. Um, you know, Randy Orton. <laughs> uh, sure. You know, uh, John Cena. You know, uh, and then you know, for the girls, Lita, because she's mm-hmm. like badass, and it was like, okay, someone like her doing it, awesome. Uh, Beth Phoenix, you know, uh, Nat- Natty. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I had a lot, and especially like when when I started learning about you know more about wrestling, uh, and and like what went into it, I I became even more invested, you know. Uh, but just just watching it every time I watched it, I was just in awe, you know. I was just like, wow, how did these um, guys, mm-hmm. girls, how do they do all this? Like it was just. It was inspiring, and it was just like, um, it just made me want to work hard, you know. And it was like, you know, these guys can do it. Maybe I can do it, you know. I, yeah. Yeah, you you, you mentioned uh, Jeff Hardy. So now Matt Hardy comes to work for us, and that has to be a pretty big deal for you. Did you get to talk to him and pick his yeah. brain about the Hardy Boys? Yeah, I mean, I I, I want to get, I would want to pick their brain a little more, uh, but. Knowing that Matt was there, you know, I marked out a little bit, you know, I was like, yeah, oh, sure. I, I remember going to so many shows, getting pictures with them, having them framed, you know. Wow. So it's it, that's the other such a cool thing for me working with AW is all these childhood heroes, everybody that I looked up to. I still can't believe that I get to go to work and work with them and actually talk to them, pick their brains. I still, you know what I mean? Every time I walk in, I'm like, wow, this is my job, you know? Yeah. I can't, you know? Yeah, I, we it's, feel the it's same wild way. to like, yeah, it's <laughs> like you walk in and there's some of these people that are just like, oh my God, like you, you're the reason I watch wrestling or you're the reason that I wanted to get into this. And it's like, hey, what's up? When you see them in catering, it's just wacky, yeah, right? absolutely wacky. It's like, uh, so it's, it's so wild. So you wrestled in high school. Uh, can you talk a bit about your amateur wrestling background and kind of how that bled into wrestling? Yeah. So it was, so after my mom told me, you know, to be a professional wrestler, start wrestling. A year later in eighth grade, I started wrestling. You know, uh, another one, like out of all the sports I've ever done, uh, wrestling, amateur wrestling was the toughest. You know, I was joining a guy's team. There was no girls team. Uh, as a matter of fact, they kind of discouraged that. They didn't want girls. Sure. So, you know, I thankfully had one other girl with me. So when I did wrestling, when I started wrestling, uh, you know, I can be honest with this. When I did, like, soccer, basketball, I didn't really take it that serious. I was kind of cocky. I was like, yeah, I'm good with this. I'm good. You, know, like, you were uh, kind of cocky. <laughs> <huh>? <laughs> you were kind of cocky. I, yeah. <laughs> but... You know, so when it came to wrestling, it was a, it was an ass kicker. It kicked my ass. That was like the first sport where I was not natural at it. I had to like learn from scratch, you know, uh, and it was just so physical and demanding on your body, you know. So getting through eighth grade was like, okay, I did it. But now the toughest thing was high school wrestling, you know, because that that wasn't to be messed with, you know. So, you know, I signed up for it. And the first year was, you know, it was rough. But I, uh, I also learned the, I also learned, you know, that in order for me to actually get through this, I had to give it my all, you know. And especially because I was pursuing professional wrestling, having, it, that, having that in mind, you know, I gave up all my other sports. And I decided to, you know, at the end of my senior year to get a scholarship. That was my goal. So I wrestled with the guys. And then I discovered that there was also girls, you know, tournaments, 
uh, at national tournaments. So I also started wrestling girls. So one of the hardest things with wrestling was keeping my weight. Because in weight, I, in wrestling, you have to keep your weight classes. And I've had to do some crazy stuff to lose weight. Where I would literally starve myself, wear sweat, uh, like three sweaters, sweatpants. It was bad. It was so healthy, you know. Like the one time I think I, I was in Fargo, I had to lose 10 pounds in two days. Oh, It was bad. I couldn't eat. I was just sucking on like ice cubes, you know taking cold showers, you know, it was a nightmare, you know? Um, yeah, it was bad. <laughs> um, but I think my soft, yeah, my sophomore year, I was getting better, you know? And then my goal was to get uh, a scholarship. Cause even at this time, I didn't know how to get into professional wrestling school. I, I had no idea. So I was just like, all right, let me go to college. Let me get into the wrestling. So, uh, you know, a cool thing for me was I did win New Jersey Girl States, uh, which was, you know, to me, it was like it was such a big accomplishment. Um, and then my senior year, I got an offer. I got a scholarship to Life University in uh, Atlanta, Georgia. So that was a really big moment for me. You know, again, one of the things I didn't know if I could accomplish, and I did. And then... Uh, again, what a coincidence. I was, when I did training, we had another girl that came by and she was awesome. Um, and just again, the one day. So another thing that I had to kind of like, um, get away from was a lot of times when I was younger and people asked me, what was my dream? What were my goals? I would be scared to say, you know, professional wrestling. Because I got picked on a lot. People shit for it. And there's a lot of times when people told me, like, you know, asked me, I kind of be like, oh, you know, go to college, you know, all that. You know, and then again, my mom, you know, said later, like, what are you scared of? This is one of the most popular things in the world, you know? So I'm, I'm so glad she said that to me because it was like, yeah, you know what? We get all those people, they hate, they make fun of me for it. You know, this is what I want to do. So senior year when I was training with this girl and we were done with practice, she asked me, she was like, you know, you know, what do you want to do? And I told her, I was like, I want to be a professional wrestler. And she was like, oh, well, I know a professional wrestler. And I was like, oh, okay. Gave me his number, messaged him. Within two minutes, he replied. And that's how I discovered CCW. You know, I saw meeting so going to ccw show for the first time indie show i didn't even know the indies existed had no idea and to go to my to go to the first show to have ccw as my first show like <laughs> i was like wait you have this too like it's not just you know at that time wwe or T. like oh we have so went there i met everybody i met the owner and um, basically, he talked to me about it and everything. And that next Monday, I went, uh, I went and had a tryout. Kicked ass in the tryout, passed, and got to step in the ring. Stepped in the ring, and I was like, I have to do this. I have to give up my scholarship because in my mind, I was like, you know, I can do. I can start this now at 19 years old, or I can wait until I'm 24 to get into this. So, you know, I decided to give up my scholarship, and you know, that was very tough on my parents. Oof, that was very tough. <laughs> yeah, I had to fight them and fight them and just tell them, like, you know, please, like, it's gonna be worth it. I know I worked so hard for this, but just this is the only reason I even did amateur wrestling was because of professional wrestling. You know, all this, every time I had, you know, every time I went to practice and training, I'm like, okay, I'm doing this because I want to be a professional wrestler, you know? So, you know, that was a bit of a fight. And, you know, with my dad, I struggled a lot, like a lot. But again, thankfully with my mom, she had my back and she was like, all right, Layla, you know? So she told me I would have to go to community college, which I did. And then I was like, ah, I can't do this. I just want to focus. <laughs> 
on wrestling. So, which again was like, you know, they weren't so happy with it. But that's when I was just like, give me time, mom. Just give me time. I will work my ass off and I will I will make it, you know. So um I forget what yeah. So yeah, I gave up my scholarship, you know, pursue wrestling and so yeah, when I first when I first saw CCW, it just it hooked me in. I was like, okay, I'm doing this now. Uh, and so that's why that's when I started training. It's one of those uh I get it. It's one of those career defining moments, right? Life defining yeah. moments for you. Uh yeah. either going to college or doing what you want to do. I, I get it. I really So you went to Japan, right? And you were in stardom for a time, right? That had to be quite an experience for you. Yeah, it was crazy because that was so when I got to wrestling, every like the the number one thing I heard was stardom. You know, go to stardom because that's that could be a career defined thing for you, right? So how that happened was really crazy because before I went to Japan, I was in Germany, WXW, which was like another great experience for me. And before that, I was training with Sumi Sakai. So I went to school with Cheeseburger and her in training. And it was funny because it was right before I went to Germany. She told me, hey, Layla, like I'm talking to some people in Japan to get you there. And that was like another thing where I was like, okay, if it happens, it happens, you know? So I went to Germany, killed it there. And then I get a text message from Sumi Sakai saying, hey, Layla, you're going to Japan. And I I didn't believe it. I was like, what are you talking about, Sumi? You know, and this, and I just was like, there's no way, like, there's no way. And then she called me, she's like, yeah, you know, you're gonna be wrestling for stardom. And I was just like shaking. Cause I was like, again, Something I didn't think I was able to, you know, at some point I didn't, you know, I didn't know if this would ever happen. And here I am, Sumi Sakai saying, I'm going to go. Oh, man. So, you know, that was the longest flight I've been on. 14 hours, I think, you know. So it was like longer than Russia. I was like, all right, I can do it. And, and it was just crazy because I left on New Year's Eve. Okay. So arrived. And then literally, I think it was like the next day. I had my first match and it was a three-way match. Mm-hmm. And to me, that was nerve wracking because one, the language barrier, you know? Um, so, and we were the first match and I remember the two girls that, you know, got there and they were just like, yeah, we're on first, you know? And they were basically, you know, telling me like what we're going to do. And then they were just like, here, you insert your, your things here, which I wasn't used to. I was, I, I'm so used to like, you know, talking about it like coming up with my own ideas you know but that but i guess it was a good thing i didn't really have to do much because it was like first time in japan you know and uh so you know thankfully that match went really well but it was such a different learning experience from you know wrestling here and then wrestling in japan um you know it was I say it was tough because the psychology threw me off. It was to me, it was something was very confusing. Um, you know, I got to work with Hannah, which was awesome because she was the she was like the first person there that made me feel welcomed. You know, and she also spoke a little bit of English, right? You know, and I just you know I remember when you know Rossi told me you know would you like to be part of you know Cyber Squad? I was like oh. I was like, of course, like this is a badass team. I fit perfectly in here, you know? So I just remember like every time we would, you know, call matches and we would do a thing that's called speak. So we, we, we would meet up like a day before, you know, and just go over everything, which was helpful. But I also just remember a lot of, a lot of it was like, it would, it's them calling the match. And then again, they'd say, hey, Layla, what do you want to do here and here? And some of the stuff I would, they would call it to me and I kind of be like, it doesn't make sense. I had a hard time with it, you know? I was, I was like, oh. And it was funny because Hannah was really cool with it. So when I made a face, she'd be like, Layla, okay, what's wrong now? <laughs> you know? <laughs> so it, it took a while to get used to it. It was definitely a great experience. Uh, you know, it made me feel more confident in like the language barrier, you know? 
it's like, okay, if I could do this in Japan, you know, if I go to a different country, I'd be more comfortable. But it was definitely, the culture was so different. It was so clean. I have never been in a country that was so clean. Yeah. You know, um, the food was awesome. Like, my favorite was Korean barbecue. Mm. So good. Korean barbecue. So good. <laughs> that, you, that you cook yourself on the table? Yeah. Yeah, about you. Yeah. It's good stuff yeah. over there. Yeah. It was, yeah. And it was like some of the stuff I would never try. Like, the first time I tried cow tongue. Yeah. You know, and I, I know I made that face too, Aubrey. But <laughs> it was delicious. Whatever sauce they had, it was delicious. Right. Exactly. And tripe. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. That's another one over there. Real chewy, yeah. but real delicious. We are yeah. T- yeah. We're talking with Layla Hirsch. Layla, coming up, we're going to field some fan questions. And that's coming up next on AEW Unrestricted. Everyone, welcome to AEW Unrestricted. Here we've been having a wonderful conversation with Layla about her world travels and her overcoming language barriers and different psychology of different types of wrestling in different countries and just fascinating, fascinating shit. And uh, got a bunch of fun fan questions coming up. Uh, These these are great. I love, man, these are some good ones. Uh, Miguel Ortiz on Twitter asks, have you gotten to learn any cool submissions from people on the roster like Taz or Brian Danielson? Um, not yet. <laughs> not yet. Uh, with Taz, I, I picked his brain a little bit when I got there because he was another wrestler that I, I loved, you know. Uh, and Brian, not yet, you know. I Hopefully I'll get there, but he's busy. He's a busy guy. Yeah, he's got a lot going on. Just yeah. a little tip. Yeah, stay away from Taz. He's a miserable piece of shit, so you don't want to do yeah. that. Yeah. Just, just kidding. <laughs> David, uh, Darren Cavanaugh wants to know, what's been your favorite match in AEW that you've competed in since you've been here, and why? Ooh, favorite match. Uh, all right, so I have to say the first one was with uh, Hikaru Shida. You know, to me, that, that will always be special. Um, And then my second... I have to say Serena Deeb as well. Sure. You know, uh, I'm, you know, you know, yeah. Right now, those two. It's pretty great that your favorites are two of your first ones at the company. It's a nice, yeah. fantastic way to start. Good memories. Good memories. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we have a question from David Bedwell. After your top class showing versus Camille at the NWA Empower event, uh, how do you hope to capture that same level of performance at AEW? Um, I think for me, it's just, it's just patience and getting the opportunity, you know? So I just, you know, when the opportunity comes, I know I can kill it. So I would love to have that kind of match now in AW, you know? So I just, it's just the time and the patience for me. Uh, but it will come, you know, and when that moment does come, uh, I'm going to kill it, you know, with whoever I get. Uh, this is a good question, and we get this question really uh, something that interests me a lot from uh, that, from uh, from all the wrestlers. This is from Rain Tech. After the pandemic era, and that's when you started, right in the middle of the pandemic, you're we're in Jacksonville, and there's no fans. But now the pandemic era kind of comes to an end. You come out. There's a big cheer and big pop from the fans. How did that feel for you? Uh, it was awesome. It was yeah. uh, it, it was nerve wracking too because it's like you said we weren't with fans for a while. So right. my concern was like, okay, are they gonna pop for me when I come out now with right. the audience? You know, and thankfully when I had my match, they did. Yeah. So it was a great feeling because I feed off the fans a lot. You know, off the crowd, I do. You know, so the first time coming out before all out it was an it was a surreal moment and it was like wow okay we actually might be getting back to the norm you know so it was a it was a great feeling and it was just great having the fans there you know because i feel like the, the feeling was mutual you know they were just as happy to be there you know as we were there to perform in front of them right uh, so great question and it, 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 yeah it was a great feeling 
Got a great question from Michael James that I kind of wish we'd ask every wrestler when we have on here. So after you first debuted, uh, Michael says, I watched you gain about a thousand plus Twitter followers in real time. What does that feel like? And did you recognize how immediately compelling you came across as a character? Ah, yeah. So it's funny. I'm not the type of person to really, it's great having followers. It, it is, but I don't try to focus on that. I just, I want that to be natural. You know, I, so after the AEW, yeah, I got so many more followers. And to me, it was like, it shows that people care for me. That's what it meant to me, that people cared for me and that I was doing something right for them to care. So that was really awesome to see. Uh, I mean, I have 27 now, which to me, I thought I would never get there. So it is pretty cool. And, um, but I, I just, I love that it's natural. You know, I don't force that on anybody. I just, I want that to be natural, you know? And it's nice to see that I have that kind of support behind me. Uh, Jen Kenson, that's Jen Kenson. Who are you, the inspirations for your wrestling style? <laughs> I would say amateur wrestling. <laughs> I, I honestly feel like if I didn't do amateur wrestling, I wouldn't be this type of wrestler. And also training at CCW, you know? Sure. So to me, I always knew that I, I wasn't going to be a girl that put on a lot of makeup, you know? I I wanted to be taken serious, you know? Sure. I want people to believe in everything that I did in the ring, you know? Um, and then, you know, seeing people, uh, and then like, again, like I studied a lot of her angle, you know? You know, Taz, uh, even like UFC I watched, you know, like Ronda Rousey, Shayna Baszler. So to me, it's inspiring seeing people like them, you know, because they're different. You know, I, I don't when I wrestle, I don't go off my looks. You know, I don't. That's not my goal. Right. I just want to you know, get in there and, and have a good wrestling match and, you know, give the crowd something to really look forward to when I step in the ring. We have a question from Rassel Kwame. Uh, you mentioned a bunch of your wrestlers uh, that you followed growing up, Jeff Hardy, Lita, uh, a lot of these guys. Who are your favorite wrestlers to watch now? Uh, okay, so I'll say Daniel Bryan. Uh, Eddie Kingston. Oh, my God. Eddie Kingston. Uh, when I watched this match with Daniel Bryan, I, I was just like, this is wrestling. This is wrestling. Right. Uh, and also when I watched, um, so Hikaru Shida and Serena Deep, the three matches they've had, for, you know, that's to me, that's just, that's wrestling. And when Serena wrestled um, Riho, it was oh my God. back when she wrestled Riho. I just remember like, I, that's, that's the type of match I want to have. So those were like, recently, like those have been my favorite. And obviously, you know, the the match Hangman and Daniel Bryan had too, like that's awesome, you know. Uh, and to go an hour on national TV, that's incredible. So, so you know, yeah. Mm. Right now, you know, there's a lot of matches, but to me, those stood out to me. Where it's like, damn, like can I have this match? <laughs> Revel Fox wants to know, uh, Layla, as someone who has competed in intergender matches in the past, do you think female wrestlers are better served being able to work with anyone, or do you prefer the divisions, male and female, to be separate in wrestling? I don't want to get heat for this. I <laughs> honestly love intergender wrestling. Oh, I do too. I yeah. love it. For me personally, because I think it's helped me, and it has shown me what I can do and the limit that, you know, the limit for me and so i love wrestling girls but to me wrestling guys it's uh i just it it makes me work when i wrestle the guys and i love hard hitting i just i love it i love intergender inter wrestling i know people have their opinions about it but i think it's i think it actually helps a lot of the women you know i do I think it's one of those uh, when when you work with more people, it makes you a better wrestler or better worker in general, just because you have so many different experiences you can pull from. So from the perspective of, say, limiting yourself to a smaller group versus 
having yeah. access to other people, I think, independent of like the gender question of, you know, divisions. It's like if you work with everyone, you have the opportunity to learn so much more. That's how well, I see it. Styles of wrestling. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, question from Chris Schmid. I completely butchered that name. Chris Schmidt. There we go. Uh, who is on the AEW women's roster do you want to have a full-on feud with? Ooh. Um, okay, so uh, Serena won. Serena. Mm-hmm. Um, she's not on top of your list. It's like, <laughs> what I, are you doing? <laughs> my favorite. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, she's so good. You know, also, uh, Ty Conti. Oh, that would be great. Ty Conti, you know, with her submission. Yeah, you two all- would beat the shit out of each other. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Akai or Aki Earth, sorry if I messed up your handle there, Akai Earth. Uh, and uh, after listening to you talk, I don't know if you have some hobbies outside of wrestling. It seems like wrestling is completely uh, taking up your time and your your energy. But Akai Earth wants to know what are some of your hobbies outside of wrestling. Um, I don't know if it's a hobby, but I love going to the movies. Oh, that's definitely a hobby. Yeah, okay, yeah. I I love going to the movies. Um again, just hanging with friends. Um I don't know. I just I like chilling, you know. If I if if I don't do wrestling, I just I like to spend time with my family, you know. Um but hang with friends too, you know. Sometimes it's good not to talk all about wrestling, you know, kind of get yeah. away from that. Sure. But, that's hard for me too, though, because I feel like I always just talk about wrestling, you know. <laughs> but I'd, I'd say the number one hobby um, is going to the movies and just watching movies in general. I love movies. Yeah, it's wonderful. It's so hard when like wrestling is your whole life. It's like, oh, I should probably be a person that's not just all about wrestling. I know. I know. Otherwise, you try and have conversations with people, and you're like, I don't know how to interact with human beings that aren't wrestlers. <laughs> <laughs> I run into that a lot. I don't know if you do too. Yeah. Yeah. Funny. Well, thank you, Layla, for being here today. This was absolutely wonderful. I love getting to hear about all of your 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 past and uh, your present, and I'm very excited to see uh, what's in your future. Uh, you can follow Layla on Instagram, legit underscore Layla underscore, and on Twitter at legit Layla. Thank you guys for having me. You guys are awesome. <laughs> thank you. Thank you guys. Yeah, don't forget, you can listen and follow this podcast, AW Unrestricted, for free wherever you get your podcast. And check out the video episodes on YouTube. Just search AEW Unrestricted. And Aubrey, what about our TV shows? Ooh, you can find us on YouTube Mondays and Tuesdays for Elevation and Dark. You can catch us on TBS. Now we're taking over multiple networks. Uh, Wednesday nights, Dynamite, 8 o'clock, 7 central on TBS. And then Rampage on TNT on Fridays, 10 o'clock, 9 central. We're, uh, well, yeah, we're taking over. We're everywhere now. Oh, yeah. I'm, uh, I'm Aubrey Edwards here with my wonderful co-host, Tony Schiavone. Thank you so much for listening to AEW Unrestricted.